Hey guys, welcome back. This is Professor Rank. In this video, I'm going to show you how to read input from the keyboard in Python. Right. So if your program needs to ask the user for some kind of input, then this video is going to show you how to get that input. Right. So really easy, believe it or not, to do this. There is a built-in function called input, and that's what you're going to use. Now, the input function can accept a string as an argument and that string is going to serve as your prompt right so if you got your program and you want to ask the user or have your program ask the user hey give me a give me a number right or tell me what your name is well you got to prompt the user to do that you're not just gonna let the user sit there staring at a screen with a blinking cursor you know you're gonna want to ask them for what your program needs or for what your program wants from them right so you're you know users can't read your mind so, you know, you need to prompt them, say, hey, enter your age, okay? So you'll do that by providing a string argument to this input function. The user will then type their response, hit enter, and then that response is, that's what you're looking for, right? That's the input that you need. And so that input function is gonna return whatever they typed as a string, right? Now that's important to keep in mind. Whatever they type comes into your program and into memory as a string and that's that's important because you know maybe a string is what you wanted you wanted their name you know they typed in Hank okay fine but if you expect to be writing a program that's going to be adding numbers together for example if the user typed then you know having them type five you know that five is going to be returned from input as a string it's not ready for addition yet, right? It's 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 a string, and the the addition operator for strings does different things than it does for integers, right? So you have to convert a string into an actual number if you need a number, right? So if they type five, you got to convert what's returned by input into an integer if you actually want to do some addition with it, right? So. You know, it sounds a heck of a lot more complex or complicated than it actually is. So we'll show you, or I'll show you how this all works with an example. All right, so I'm gonna use idle for this example. On the right-hand side, I got my text editor all ready to go. And on the left side of the screen, I got the Python shell all ready to go. So that way you can see the output um, for my program. I'm gonna run this sucker in scripted mode. So on the right hand side, remember to get input from the user, from the keyboard, from the keyboard, we're going to do what? We're going to use the input function, right? And so the input function can take an argument, that's a string, to serve as the prompt and it returns what the user types as a string, okay? So let's say that I wanted to ask the user for their name, right? So I have the input function and I want to have a prompt in here, right? So I'll have a string and I'll say, you know, enter your name, for example, right? Um, so got that and I, don't want the user to immediately type the response right after the colon, so I put a space here. Um, so that way there'll be a space between the waiting cursor and the colon, right? So when they type their response, okay, that is gonna be returned by input as a string. And then I gotta put what they typed somewhere, and so I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put it in a variable that I'll call name, okay? And then once that's done, just to show you that it worked, I'll go ahead and pass that name to the print function. Okay, so hit F5. Now you can see, enter your name. So my Python program, my Python script here is stuck right here, right? The input function typed out on the screen, enter your name, space. And so you can see over here, you see how the cursor is blinking and there's a space between the colon and the cursor. That's what I wanted to have happen. That's why I put this space right here, right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type my first name. I'm gonna say uh, Hank, right? And then as soon as I hit enter, Python's gonna read in that string 
and then it's going to assign it to name and then print's going to print that variable so we're going to see hank on the screen right so there it is okay now maybe i wanted to do something else i wanted to say well hello right and then um you know i'll say hello hank you know whatever whatever i type so let's 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 make that modification so at five i type in hank right and then it says hello hank right because we printed hello and then whatever the user typed okay now if i run this program again and this time i say well my name is 55 okay well hello 55 input returns 55 as a string okay so um let's change this up a little bit let's say that i wanted to add a couple of numbers together i want to write a program ask the user for two numbers and then we're gonna we're gonna show them the sum of those numbers right so i might do something like this first i'll just you know forget about converting uh what the user types into number first right that's going to be a step that we're going to need to have happen but we'll just we'll just we'll just play like that doesn't matter right we'll just we'll just assume we'll just we'll just Say, so, yeah, oh, well, you know, we'll ask the user to enter the first number, right? And, um, you know, that'll go into num1. They're going to type 5, and so 5 will go into num1, right? And so then we'll ask for the second number, right? And we'll just forget for a second that input returns a string, and uh, they'll type, I don't know, maybe something like 2. And so then num2 uh, will be, we'll have the string 2 assigned to it, right? And so then we'll try to add those two numbers together. Right? Total equals dumb one plus dumb two. And then, and then we'll print out, well, your answer is, okay, and then, you know, we'll print the contents of that variable. Okay, so let's go ahead and run and see what happens. Okay, so you're forgetting about data types here for a second. We forgot that input returns a string, and so the user types five for the first number, right, and that goes into num1, and program asks them to enter the second number, and we type two. Right, and so as soon as we do that, two is going to be assigned to two, and then five plus two is seven, right? Wait, what? Why does it say your answer is 52? Isn't five plus two seven? Well, yeah, five plus two is seven, but here's the thing. Input returns strings, right? So what went into num one was the string five. Went into num two was the string two. In other words, it was a single character string where it was the character 5 in num1 and the character 2 in num2, right? There was a string with a single character 5 and 2. Now, when you add two strings together in Python, you get concatenation, right? So what got assigned to total was the string 52 because the string 5 plus the string 2 is the string 52. It's kind of like if I tried to add the string hello and the string world together, I would get a new string, hello world, right? So if I actually want to do arithmetic, I have to first convert num1 into an integer, right? So I can take the int conversion function and pass to it num1, and then I'll replace the string that was already in num1 with what I converted. Okay, and I'll do the same thing for num2. Now, the right side executes first, right? And then um, the assignment happens. So when I run this now, here's what's going to happen. Oops, let me get rid of, let me get rid of this here. Okay, what's going to happen is, is that this first line executes, and I'll type 5 just like before, and hit enter. Now, when that happened, the string five was returned by input and assigned to num1. But then on the next line, num1 was passed to the int function. Now, what was in num1? A string. But what does int return? Right? It takes that string and then converts it, makes a copy that's an integer, and then that replaced the string that was assigned to num1. Okay? And then a similar thing's gonna happen when I type two for num two. And so now we see that the answer is seven. So let's look at that one more time by doing hand tracing, right? We'll trace to the code and we'll see exactly what's happening in memory, right? So 
that first line when the program runs, right, this guy right here, when that happens, this variable num1 comes into existence, right? So the user types 5. Now the input function returns 5 as a string, right? So that's assigned to num1. But once that's done, then the next line executes, and that 5, num1, was passed into the int function as an argument, right? So when that happened, that string five went into the int function. Now what comes out of the int function? The integer five, okay? Now that integer five then is assigned to the num1 variable, right? Because that's what we see, int num1 is assigned to num1. So that five replaces, the integer five replaces the string five. So num1 now has the integer five assigned to it. So on the next line, the process repeats. Num2 comes into existence. The user types two at the keyboard. The input function returns the string two, and that's assigned to the num2 variable. And then the next line happens, where num2 is passed to the int function, right? And what's passed into the int function? The string two. And then what comes out of the int function? The integer two. Now that integer two replaces the string two that was assigned the num two. So our variables look like that. Now, when this next line comes, total equals num one plus num two. Now what we have are two integers. The integers five and two are added together. Num1 and num2 are added together. So 5 plus 2, an integer plus an integer is an integer, so 5 plus 2 is equal to 7. And then that is what gets assigned to the total variable. So now when this final line executes, print your answer is total. Well, we see your answer is on the screen, and then we take the contents of the total variable, which is the integer 7, and so we see 7 on the screen. Okay, so one more time, we'll run this, we'll run the shell. So I type five, I type two, and what do we see? Five plus two is seven. Okay, now there's another way we can write this code and whenever you're learning to program in a language, there's almost always multiple ways that you can do things. Instead of having a separate line here do that conversion for you, you can do what's known as nesting function calls. So what we can do is, is we can take the output of the input function and pass it directly to the integer function, okay? And we can do that in both cases. Okay, we can both do that both times, All right? Do you have to do that? No, you just saw me run the program just fine. But if you want fewer lines of code, you can, All right? So let's go ahead and run it. So you're going to see, look, it's going to work the exact same way. Now, if you're using floating point numbers, then you're going to need to use the float function, okay? Because an int function is for integers, right? To convert int strings into integers, the float function is for converting um, float strings, right? To convert the string 3.75 into the floating point number 3.75 and to convert the um, string 1.12 into the actual floating point number 1.12 so that way you're adding two floating point numbers together and then that gets you your answer 4.87 okay so reading from the keyboard really easy to do okay you just have to keep in mind you know what's happening okay if you want to provide a prompt you do that by providing a single string argument similar to how you might pass a string as an argument to the print function but keep in mind that input no matter what the user types the input function returns it as a string okay as a string so if you plan on doing any arithmetic with whatever the user typed 
you got to make sure to convert that string into the appropriate data type before you do your arithmetic okay okay so that's going to bring this video to a close if you felt that the video was useful please consider giving the video a thumbs up and if you thought that the video sucked well then you've got that thumbs down button as an option as well if you'd like to see more videos if you're interested in more content from the channel feel free to hit that subscribe button and as usual if you're a student of mine and you have further questions feel free to drop me an email or to stop by my office hours okay thanks for watching and we'll see you next time